So this is my seedling experiment. I think I got maybe a couple hundred seedlings going. Uh, about half of that is uh, Kent and Autophos, and the other half is some named mango varieties. Well, quite some of them quite pretty popular name varieties. Those four containers in the last row right there that you see, those were started out last year. Uh, mostly Kent's and Altafos. Uh, these right here were Kent's. And then these right here are Altafos and Kent's. Uh, there's a bit of a difference in look at to them. Uh, lots of the Altafo ceilings you can kind of see, they come out more of a light brownish slash greenish color uh, the leaves are a bit more flatter when they come out there's not like a curvature in the middle and then when it comes to the cans the leaves come out a bit more darker and there's a bit more waviness and curviness in the middle of the stems uh, this was started last summer i just threw a bunch of seeds whatever whatever number of seeds of i could fit into the pot uh, the cans, lots of the cans actually end up, I end up losing it this uh, winter when it's raining. So I'm hoping the ones that survive is a bit more hardier. Uh, so, and in terms of the autophos, I did lose a few, but not as many as the cans. Okay. Uh, these right here are autophos things I started out this this summer. Uh, this right here are Kent seedlings. Again, I just kind of throw them on pots and then see how it goes. My pot mixture on these are uh, mostly half peat, half perlite, pumice, and some sand if I have some around. But the biggest thing is it's about half peat and then a, a mixture of either kind of sand, perlite, and pumice. I uh, see some of these seedlings here. I have quite a few uh, sweet tart seedlings going on. These are the sweet tart seedlings. Some cogs haul. Got some, what is this? This is cotton candy. Some honey kiss. A lot more sweet tarts. These are all sweet tarts right here. This is Bombay. I have a few Bombay seedlings. Uh, Bombay was one of the harder varieties to dehusk. Uh, I tried dehusking one and it just like was so difficult the embryo got damaged. So I just planted the entire seed and with the husk with the seed husk and everything and they came out quite fine. They started off a little behind, but then they caught up pretty quickly. And most most of these small one gallon pots, they were all started at pretty much uh, middle of June to early July. This is another Bombay seedling. Lots of honey kiss right here. Honey kiss. Some coconut creams, a cac, a few more sweet tarts. These are all sweet tarts. Uh, these right here are a lot of honey kiss. A few PPK here. Had a few PPK, but they just came out with one stem. I got, I think I got one that came out with two stems. So one of it should be a clone. Some guava. Uh, this is guava Saint Alone. They got a very strong kind of uh, Indian kind of smell to the leaves when you crush them. Pretty pretty vigorous looking growth on the guavas. I 
have a maha here. And maha is a pretty vigorous grower, but all the seeds has these tiny, tiny embryos, so they've been kind of a bit slow to get started. This is some rosy gold right here. Lemon zest. Some more sweet tart. Some more lemon zest. Uh, quite a, I planted quite a few lemon zest and there's quite a few of them that just came out with one stem. So it seems like a lot of them were just mono embryonic and then there's some that came out with several stems like this right here. This is one stem on the lemon zest. This is multiple stem on lemon zest. This is Kerry. Um, I think I planted three seeds. This one has so far has this really pale kind of greenish color to the new leaves. These other two has pretty dark leaves. Pretty dark new leaves. Some more lemon zest. There's some lemon zest here. This is coconut cream. Coconut cream. Coconut cream. I think coconut cream. Some M4s. The M4s for the most part seems like they produce a lot of stems. Uh, the leaves so far come out more like a bronzy, light greenish color. Uh, have this M4. Its new leaves has been dark red. Then had some tiny ones here. This is the lemon zest, sweet tart, this is a Bombay, another lemon zest, and another lemon zest. Okay. So this is my seedling experiment. Uh, in terms of the Kent and our top first you see back there, those are mostly going to be used as sweet stocks. In terms of these uh, name cultivars, I I'm not really quite sure what I'll be doing it with it yet. Some of them I, some of them I'll probably growing out. Some of them I'll probably end up either using as root stock. Um, it would just kind of depend. And. Uh, I'm also selecting for some with unique characteristics in terms of either like the flavor profile that hopefully kind of matches up with the smell of the leaves. I have two that I'm, out of all these I've grown, I have two unique ones that I'm definitely looking to keep. This is a lemon zest one, uh, and, but the leaves themselves does not smell at all like lemon zest. It smells more like an Indian variety and closely resembles the smell of an Alfonso. That's uh, something I definitely like to grow and see what happens. Uh, this one's a Bombay. It has the same similar smell that was uh, kind of leaning more towards Indian Alfonso like, but it's definitely not the smell of my. Bombay tree. I do have a Bombay and it doesn't smell like it at all. So, so far out of all these hundreds of seedlings, these are my two unique ones. This lemon zest seedling and this Bombay seedling that I'm looking to grow out. This lemon zest doesn't smell like any of the other ones that I have and this Bombay doesn't smell like the, any of the other ones I have. Pretty unique smell. So. Uh, something that reminds me of an Alfonso. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know what the pollinating parent is. It could have just been anything uh, in that kind of Indian flavor profile. Okay. So that's an update on my seedling project. Uh, I'll provide some more videos of, of it as it progresses along. Thank you.